One of the best personalities in the fishing world is angling correspondent and presenter Des Taylor. He's a very successful specimen hunter, but also an extremely experienced all-rounder. Pay-to-fish lakes have become a popular choice of venue across the United Kingdom and will join Des on a typical session of lake fishing and learn some of the tips that'll improve our catch rates. For those who have a river close by and want to explore this option, Des will change locations but probably not the hat and pass on some of the wisdom that has made him a king of course. There you go, one of my favourite species, the roach. Over the last few years, the carp has overtook it for being the most popular fish in Great Britain. But for me, even now, this fish, the roach, is one of my favourites. Hopefully over the next couple of days, I'm going to be showing you methods that will catch fish like this and maybe up to two pounds. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. Cast out again, and then we'll look into one of the many methods that I'm going to be showing you over the next couple of days. This is a beautiful lake, right by the side of the motorway. It's called Broadlands Lake. It's absolutely stuffed with roach up to two pounds, bream up to eight pounds, carp up to over 30 pounds. We won't be fishing for the carp over the next couple of days, but what we're going to do is try and put a mixed bag of roach and bream, the sort of bag that, if you fish the right methods, can be quite common to catch on still waters. Oh, I'm having a bite of chuck. Fishing up in the water, putting a lot of bait in. Every time I cast out a pouch full of bait, and those fish are just about five foot down coming up after the single maggot. Absolutely fantastic fishing. And one that I really enjoy doing because nowadays it's so easy to get into the trend of sitting on a bed chair all the time and waiting for those big carp, big tench, etc. But believe me, a day's fishing on the float like this, you feel like you've fished, you've worked at your fishing, it's real good fun. And some big fish can be had using this method. I've caught five pound oar, two pound roach, five pound chub, all sorts of fish out of still waters like this, doing this exact method. Yep. I've had fish up to around about a pound so far. I'm trying to hopefully feed these smaller fish out. But having said that, not all roach begin at two pounds. And although I suppose I'm known as a big fish angler in the, the angling press, I've spent many, many, many days fishing for fish that size and enjoyed it all day long. And I don't mean just catching them for live bait. I've actually spent time out to catch fish like this. For a start, you're improving your, your angling techniques, you're working, you're not, you're not being idle. And the day that I stopped enjoying the float going under, well, that'll be the day I pack up fishing. Let's talk a little about the method. What I did when I came, straight away, I was shooting maggots out into the swim. I always find it strange that people wait till they've tattled up to start spraying out into the swim. If I'm going to fish this method, and I know there's roach out there, you know, a, a lake like this that's full of roach, then if it takes me 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, 20 minutes to tattle up, then every couple of minutes I just keep spraying bait out there. 
because then you've got a 20 minute start. You know, why tattle up, get everything set up and then start spraying bait? Typical today, I've sort of started and as soon as I've cast out, I'm into fish. I can see fish rising in the swim before I even start fishing. That's perfect. And the added advantage, and I've mentioned it many times, on my videos and articles before that there's nothing better than feeding fish without actually hooking any. You're getting them confident before you even start. And that's what's typical that's happened today. I've been feeding for about 20 minutes while I've been setting my gear up, cast out, and away you go. I'm using a 13 foot fine action, 13 foot float rod. It's actually a Silstar match team rod. It's a beautiful rod. There's a lot of rods like this on the market. I'm not just saying that this is the only rod, it's the one I use. I like it um, because I can use lines like today, I'm using 2.6 main line and I'm using a 1.7 bottom. I don't want to come any lower. A lot of people will say that you can actually come down and land anything on 1.1, one, one, 3 quarter pound bottom. To be perfectly honest, although I'm hooking and sort of landing small roach at the moment. That one's a little bit better. That's a nice fish. Then I want to be in a situation that if I do hook a two or a three pound roach, then it could be that next bite and I want to be able to land the, another beautiful roach. Look at this. There we go, just down. Yes, and another one. <laughs> Another roach. Everyone a roach. Let's just look at the setup. I've got a straight waggler. There's the waggler. Locked with two large shots, obviously depending on the weight. This one I think is sort of a three AA. So I've locked it with the AA. Bolt it all up there. I've come down, I've put a dropper shot there. I want it to go through the water fairly fast to get through the very, very tiny fish. And even now, I'm still catching quite a small, a few uh, small fish. I've then got farther down, I've got a number eight down there just to give me some indication on the float. And then I've got a size 18 hook. To one seven bottom. That's two six main line with a one seven bottom, and that's basically it. Beautiful bag of roach. Over twenty pound of fish there. Fabulous. Look at those. Quality roach fishing. Absolute quality. Absolute quality. Let's put them back. Look at these for conditioned roach. Beautiful condition. Absolutely beautiful condition roach. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Absolutely beautiful. Oh. Bags of life. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Absolutely cracking. Let's put them all back. Notice I'm not rolling them down the net. I'm just lifting the net up and letting these fish out. Away you go, folks. Oh. Beautiful. Having had probably 20, 25 pound of roach. What I'm gonna do now is set my net out for the night session. This is, this is probably typical me when I come to a venue like this, trying to suss the venue out, just like you will when you go to a new venue. I've caught some roach on the float. Now I'm gonna ground bait and see if I can get some bream and roach, some, perhaps some bigger fish. But I'm gonna fish in the evening and I'm gonna to fish tomorrow morning. The net's all ready for in the night. Let's go and put the ground bait in. Make sure the net's spread out like that, not heaped up in the, in the side where you're going to kill fish. 
hopefully if you have a few decent bream, we want them to have plenty of room. So there's the net spread out nicely. Let's have a look at my magic mix. I use London Iron Ground Bait, and I use a mixture of Expo, which is an explosing ground bait, which just keeps popping up and blowing up and sending things to the surface. Any fish in mid-water, etc., will sense the ground bait and get down onto the ground bait. Standard brown crumb, which, always, which is all we used to have years ago, how it's all changed. And then, Super Champion, which is another special ground bait made by Vandenhain. I haven't got a clue what's in. All I know is they produce fish. I mix those together, and in that, I'll put some liquid sweet corn, a tin of Jolly Green Giant, and a couple of squirts of sweet liquid molassa. I put all that together, throw some maggots in as well and some casters, and mix it up so I get a nice texture that I can send out with my throwing spoon. Now this is my throwing spoon. This is what I use. It's the bottom of a, an uptied boat rod. You can use any pole of any description, really. I've just taped uh, a spoon on. I like the spoon with the holes in, not because it's aerodynamic or anything daft like that, but what happens is when you put your ground bait, you can actually push it in and it actually holds it onto the spoon. Okay? Let's send that out into the swim and see if we can. A lot of people would think that that's a lot of ground bait. Believe me, if you have a shoal of bream, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pound bream, they will mop that up in minutes. I would use, if I knew the water a lot better, it wouldn't, uh, it may shock you, I would actually use a bin full and it wouldn't worry me at all. Believe me, I've fished in Ireland, Norfolk, gravel pits, where I've put that much in and I've only held a shoal of big bream for the matter of a couple of hours before they've ate the lot. It's no good putting two or three balls in if you want a great big bag of fish. Feed them. Let's do that now. What I'm doing now is just moulding the ground bait into balls, like so. I probably do sort of half a dozen, ten balls at a time, ready to put on the on the spoon. Now, some of these may break into half, it doesn't really matter. It's just going into the general area. There you go. Beautiful. Probably about 40 yards. I'm not trying to get it into a tight area. I'm going to try and get it into an area probably 10 yards by 20 yards, something like that. There you go. I don't need it in a tight area. One of the worst things you can do is have a shoal of bream feeding on a ground bait area like this. What's the point of that? Get them feeding, get them moving from one area to another area for the bait. Better bites, less line bites. There you go. Beautiful. Just as much fun as fishing this. All that lovely flavoured ground bait. There you go. Beautiful. Just imagining those bream and those roach sneaking in just on dark. Sneaking in, thinking it's nice and safe. All that bait on the floor. Des has gone home. Wrong. There you are. Maggots just maggots popping out. Sweet corn. Out you go. Right. Couple more balls. 
We're down to the last dregs and I'll keep a bit for tomorrow morning. There you go. What I'm going to do, I'll just flirt a few boilies in there as well. I'm going to get a few boilies to put in there as well. There's my boilie pot. I'm just putting some mini boilers into the swim as well. The carp anglers have been having some very big roach. Now, if they're picking up boilies, then I'm going to put a few boilies out. Sod's law, I'll be after roach and a 20 pound carp will pick it up. But I won't moan at that. Right, there you go. Ground bait, maggots, sweet corn, a few mini boilies, nice aroma, settle it down. Let's show you the rigs. We'll wait about an hour, just as it's getting dark, then we'll put the bait in. The first rig I'm gonna put out is a bit of a mixed bag, really. On this water, it's seen so many boilies, like a lot of carp woods in this country, you can pick almost anything on it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fish three rods, but one rod I'm gonna fish, a standard hair rig, with a Kevin Maddox wild strawberry boilie, braid link, up to a bomb, piece of silicon, just pushed onto the swivel, which makes it a semi-fixed rig, and hopefully whatever picks it up will look itself. Let's sling it over the top of the ground bait. A very standard rig. The setup I'm using is just little bobbins. I'll let that down like so. And when we get a run, it'll be. There you go. This is the rig that I'll be using this evening and tomorrow morning to catch these bream and roach. It's the loop method, and it's a method that I use on the river and in still water for fairly close fishing. We're only casting about 30 or 40 yards, so this will be just the job for that. What I've got is, I've tied a loop there, which the feeder is running on. That's one big loop. Another loop to stop the feeder coming down to the hook length. Then a loop to loop that I connect my hook length on. That's six pound main line, and then four pound, what I've got is about a three foot, three and a half foot hook length, and one of my favorite baits for big roach and big bream. There you go. Three or four maggots, size 10 hook, tipped with a piece of sweet corn. Fill that feeder up with maggots. Pack them nice and tight. Sling them over that lovely bait. Beautiful. Straight on. Well, here we are. Settled for the evening. Everything I've got. Still warm. So, I've not put my coat on yet, but just about everything I need here. My torch. Spare hook lengths, spare hooks, feeders, torch for my neck for tying, the hooks at night, rods easy, reachable. Over here, my other baits, change baits, I've got some worms here, lobworms. I've got two containers of those, and I've got a container, a small container, of little reds. There you go, forceps ready. Bait to hand. Nice comfy seat. 
That's one of the nice things about this. You've got a fish. They're not just going to hang on like carp fishing. You've actually got a fish. When I get a take, I've got to get over that rod and I've got a strike. And hopefully that happens a few times. I think what we'll get is perhaps a, a few bites if we're lucky, just as dark falls, just as darkness comes. But then I'm expecting a lot of fish to come on the bait tomorrow morning, about sort of six o'clock, seven o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, 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 look at this. Now then, Taylor, let's see what you can do now. Oh my God, look at this. I was bringing in a three ounce, something like that, a three ounce roach. You'll see my waggly come up in a minute. Look, there it is. And what's grabbed hold of it? I have landed them to 15 pound like this in the past. The two and a half pound bottom. Ah, he's let it go. Oh no, he's still got it. Look, he's grabbed hold of it again. He let it go and he's grabbed hold of it again. Let's see if we can lift him up this time. Did you see it? He actually, oh, he's let go now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was a bit disappointed with what happened last night. Although the temperatures went down, I thought I should have had a few more roach and perhaps a, a few bream. Conditions are not good when you consider how bright and how hot it is in the day and then going almost to freezing point. It was four or five degrees last night. The rig I'm going to use is straight through on six pound line. There you go, with a bunch of maggots and off there that's about two foot tail and then with about an eight foot tail which is connected by uh, a five turn water knot onto the line a fixed pattern oster and then i'm going to use a ground bait feeder you can see inside those little holders there i'm going to plunge that into the ground bait like so and then just fill it up with a secret mixture i've already spoon baited the swim like I did last night. It's the same mix, but this time that's what's going to go out. Cast that out. This is going to land round by the feed and hopefully those bream are going to find that irresist irresistible. As soon as I cast it out, look what's happened. Five maggots, size 10, smash the maggots to pieces, look. <laughs> Who said you need to, to use fine gear to catch, to catch roach? Hopefully we're gonna catch some a lot bigger than that. There's a lot of activity out there at the moment with these roach, a lot of activity. Oh, look at this. A lot of activity out there. This method will pick up, huh, I would say, every fish besides the predators in here. I know I was talking to it. I was talking to a chap and he was saying that the other day he'd had a few bream and he'd also had six carp on this method. This one's twitching like hell. Oh. This method of actually baiting up right at night, if you're allowed to do it on your water, night fish, then just before dark, so the birds 
Oh, they can't get down on it and take all your ground bait. It's an absolute great way to make a nice catch of fish. Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, whatever. Get there about six or seven o'clock, just before dark at this time of the year. Put in some ground bait. No need to have the, all the expensive stuff that I've got today. Just brown crumb mixed with white crumb, perhaps a 50-50 mix. Put a fair amount out. I'd be talking about at least five or six pounds. A few casters, a few maggots, a bit of sweet corn, a bit of meat, whatever. Put it into the swim and then fish this method. You'll be surprised what it produces. Specimen tench, rod, bream, roach, carp, everything. This method, it can catch almost anything. I'm sure that had the, not the temperature been dropping it at night, then it would produce a lot more than we're having now. I suspect the roach are feeding because they will actually feed at lower temperatures. Although I don't expect the lake to sort of change that much in temperature overnight. But if that cool wind gets up, it'll chill the water and sport will be dowy again. But you never know. We're having a lot of activity in the swim now. I think I'll prepare for night. Get my coat on. Temperature's dropping. Get my torch. Nice little torch. The timer thing's up. There you go. There you go. Here we go. That's a slack liner. Look at that. Took the lift of the feeder. Yep. That dropped straight back. Small roach. Yes. Yeah, it's a very small roach this time, but see the, how sensitive that indicator is? That indicator actually dropped back that time. Again, look at that. <laughs> Remember, that's a size 10 hook with five, six maggots on. And that little devil has picked it up. Well, there you go, folks a net of quality roach. And remember what I said, the methods that I've used will catch two pound roach, 10 pound bream, double figured carp. But how can I be disappointed with the roach fishing that I've had at Broadlands? And to be perfectly honest, all around the country, there is a roach revival there's a lot of roach this size around the country, not only in Broadlands, and people are simply not fishing for them. I've enjoyed catching those just as much as I've enjoyed catching a 30 pound carp. It's been great fun. Let's put them back. What a fabulous bag of fish. Look at that, lovely. Oh, roacheroonies. Now, although I'm probably known for just big fish, I really get insulted by that because to be perfectly honest, I enjoy catching fish of any size and of any species. And certainly, if you use the methods that I've talked about over the last couple of days, you'll have a great time on your local lake. Okay, let's have a change of scenery and teleport Des from a still water to a flowing river. If you've ever wondered where true anglers go when they die, then this is it. One of the weirpools on the River Kennet. 
One of my favourite, favourite rivers, it really is. And you can see why. What I hope to do over the next two days is catch as many different species as possible. Barbel, chub, pike, perch, roach, whatever I can in the next two days. I'm just going to try and get bites and I'm going to introduce you to river fishing in general. Let's take a, a look at the weir pool. If we look straight down the weir pool, we can see that the main river Kennet comes down here. It pushes out into the centre. But slightly to the right is the flow, what we call the crease. And that is being formed by those two outlets there, which is actually from the trout farm. That water is pumped upstream into the trout farm and then pumped out there. That is a fantastic holding spot for barbel. If we look farther down in the slightly quieter water, that's where the chub and roach will hold. And there'll also be some good perch and pike. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this as natural as possible by putting some boilies and some hemp to try and catch a few barbel. We'll throw them in here, it'll just go over the weir, it'll settle in the white water, and that's where the barbel are at the moment. The river's very low, there's not much oxygen in there, and the most oxygen in the river is that white water. So let's make it as natural as possible. I'll show you how to put the bait in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these boilies right on the sill of the weir pool, just like this. There you go. And those boilies will go straight over the ledge, straight into the white water. There's certain flavour boilies that Barbel and Chub like. And Esterberries and Tutti Fruit is a, one of those boilies they like. This is a nice fish to start the day, certainly. Feels like a Chub rather than a Barbel, actually. If it is a Chub, it's a, it's a good Chub. Yes, it's a Chub. I'm actually using a, a new rod today, it's a present from my old mate Lawrence Breakspear. He's uh, bought a range of rods out and he's actually given me this one and what a way to break it in. Yeah, it's a very, very nice chub. The Kennet's full of nice chub. Look at the boiler on his mouth, where he's took it in, there you go, look. Lovely fish, oh, fantastic. Fabulous fish, fabulous fish. Look at that, huh? That looks as though it might have been caught by a pike. There's a lot of pike in this uh, in this river, and later on, hopefully, you should catch one. Yeah, it definitely looks like. If you see the teeth marks, now you can imagine the the pike that's done that. Teeth mark here, teeth mark here, and that's not necessarily a monstrous pike. Fish of eight and nine pound could grab a chub like that. There you go. <coughs> Come and have a closer look at the rig. All it is, is a big Arsley bomb, ounce and a half, that I've flattened with a hammer. That, that actually holds the bottom better so it doesn't move around. I want to do the moving round. When I lift the rod, it'll move rather than just keep tripping. I've got a rubber bead, a swivel. This is eight pound line. This is six pound line coming down to my hair rig. And the hair rig's pretty straightforward. There it is. Size 8 hook with the boilie on the end. Look at that. When he picks it up, what's he get? He gets the hook and he's hooked. Look. Can't pick that boilie up without being hooked. Let's sling it out again and see if we can catch another one. Come on, not quite. Come on, my old son. Look at that. Boilie's on his nose, look. Look at the boilie on his nose. <laughs> ah. 
There you go. A beautiful Kennet Barbel. An absolute, look at the fin. Perfect fin, a perfect fish. And the boilie on his nose as well. <laughs> look at the boilie on his nose. That's how he picks it up. And that's how he gets caught. Right, let's unhook that. Let's put it with a chub. That is well in. So I like it. There you go. I've got him. That bit of slack line. That bit of slack line. And I tighten back up, and away we go. This fish is finding every bit of weed. I thought it may be a chub. You can guarantee that if they find snags or find weed, it's a decent chub. Look at that, a lovely, lovely chub. A cracker, look at that. Look at it gone in the weed again. <laughs> Not this time, pal, you're mine. Look at that, a beautiful chub. Ah. Oh. That is what river fishing is all about. For me, I love my carp fishing, I love my pike fishing, but to me, that is the most fantastic sight of all. A nice big river chub. Look at that for a fish, folks. Ah, oh, lovely. Let's see where it is, look at that. Took it straight in, straight in, you see it? There you go. Took the boilie sweet as a nut. What a beautiful fish. That's over four pounds. That's a bonny, bonny fish. Look at the classic lines of the chub. Beautiful. This is gonna be a big fish in the, in the winter. This is probably the lightest they are at the moment. In the summer, they've spawned. But now, September, they're just starting to put a bit of weight on. You see the, the stomach there? They're just starting to put a bit of weight on. These fish will be four and a half, five pounds in just a few weeks' time. Let's put that back in the net. Beautiful fish. That's just a couple of hours fishing under that weir pool. But I'm not going to just keep catching those fish. I've come down here and I want to show you to, how to catch a number of fish. That's how to catch them on the boilie. Now let's probably see if we can catch a pike. But let's first of all look at this little catch. Ugh. That's literally just a few hours fishing. The preparation of the swim was right. Let's just put these on grass. The preparation of the swim was right. And there we go, look at these. And in, the, in here is hemp, boilers and all sorts of things that these fish have been eating. There we go, there's, let's get the three chub. Have a look at those three chub on the net. There's that one that was caught that the pike had had. Look at that. Three lovely, lovely chub and a barbel as well. All on the boiler. No maggots, no casters. A different method hopefully for you. There you go. Absolutely beautiful fish. Let's get those back. I don't want them out the water too long. I've come to the backwater off the weir, which is a very, very tiny side stream of the main river. And hopefully, I'm gonna show you how to use the bread to catch the chub. I've pulled the middle out of a piece of bread, and I'm just putting them into little bits, and I'm gonna prime the swim. Then I'm gonna set my tattle up, and we'll have a go there. So let's just see what happens.
keep quiet, keep well concealed, and we'll catch a chug. Let's show you the tattle. Now comes probably the simplest way of fishing of all. I've designed a bag that's got a pad on the back that I just take off to sit on. I've got my bait, which is the bread. I've got my landing net, and then the rod. Six pound line with the simplest, the very, very simplest of rigs. Look at this, six pound line direct, a size six, super specialist hook, and made sure it's sharp, with two swan shots just pinched on there, about three inches away. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a piece of crust on there, like so, just hook it on through, through, bring it back, and all that will do is imagine when that's on the bottom, that will sit up like that. And when you move it, it'll just waver around in the current. And silly old chub loves it. Now let's see if we can catch a fish. Quiver tip rod. Just add a little nudge, and I'll just pull it up sometimes. Doing that will make it go round just nudging the bait. Sometimes pulling the bait just away from it, but that was definitely a little touch. Whether it was a fish actually touching the line, or whether it was actually a fish mouthing the bait, it doesn't matter, that means there's a fish nearby. Straight away, look, there you go. Trying for the roots, trying for the roots, but I'm not gonna let him get there. It's a good fish. I'm not letting to let him get there. Come on, my beauty, look at this fish. Yes! <laughs> the old bread. Look at that. First, second chuck in. Look what we've got. Old chubberoni. Come on, my old friend. There you go. Whee! <laughs> Not a big fish, but as you can see, an absolutely fantastic method how to catch, how to catch chub. There it is, look. Hook straight in the corner of the mouth. Swan shot, there to be seen. What a lovely fish. One of my favorite fish, look at that. The method shows again, does the business. Oh, this is an incredible situation to get a fish. <laughs> Can you see it over by the trees? Not a big fish. Oh, this should be interesting how I get this fish. To say the least, I'm going in, I'm afraid. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That just shows that even in the, the most dodgier swims that this method works, you can make that bread work under the trees. There's some good chub under there. This is not one of the big ones, admittedly, but it could quite have easily have been. Well worth the effort. A lovely chub, again on the bread. What a method. I just lost a shot, I was actually fishing with one shot. I've just put another shot back on. And what I'm gonna do, instead of casting under the tree, I'm gonna put it at the back of the tree. The fish keep dropping back, and then they come back up. So what I'm gonna try and do, is I'm gonna try and lay an ambush. When they come back, let's see if they actually are willing to, to take a bait the back of the, the back of the tree, like that. And swimming downstream, and they're coming upstream, back to where they want to be. And I've got that at last. Yes, that's a good fish. That's a better fish. Yes, 
got you, you devil. <laughs> Waited for you and got you. One of the better fish. Come on, my beauty. Come on. Come on, my beauty. Come on. Come on, my beauty. I left up the back of the tree. They kept dropping back and then coming off. This is a better fish. Look at his big, big white mouth. Look at his big white mouth. Come on, my beauty. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, I've got three pounds of weed and a decent chunk. <laughs> That's one of the better ones. Look at that. Little spot. Beautiful fish. Now that's a chub. Look at that. Fantastic. That shows the method. All I need to catch you now is a, a perch and a pike, and we've emptied the river. I'll put that back. Put it back into his home. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Go on, my old beauty. Go on. Go on. Go on. Now the reason I've selected this spot is because I'm off the main weir and although this is a mini weir, I've got a lot less flow. And I think perch tend to go for those areas that have got not so much a powerful a flow. We caught the chub and we caught the barbel in the main flow, they like that. But the perch, well they like this slacker water. And even with this small flow of water here, what I'm fishing is I'm putting the float just in this slacker water. There's a few snags, you can see a few hanging reeds and grasses, and there's a few snags in here anyway, because what will happen when the river's in flood, it will dump all kinds of debris over where my float is. So that's where perch like to hang out, they like to hide there, and as the minnows and small fry fish are there, they can ambush them perfectly. And if you can get a nice juicy lobworm in there and just keep twitching it along, then old perch you really can't uh, can't resist that. This is the perfect perch spot. Yep, there you go, that's what we've come for. Not a big perch, but... There you go, very, very simple rig. Lobworm. I'll explain the rig in more detail in a moment. There you go. Not every fish is a monster. Come and have a look at it. There you go. Taylor with an absolute specimen. <laughs> I'll never live it down, me mate. <laughs> the rig I'm using today for the perch is very, very simple indeed. What I've done is I've put a straight waggler on, which takes three BB. I've locked it up with some shots there. Got a shot halfway down the line, and then I've got a shot that's positioned right on the bottom. Yes, and another one. Oh dear. Coming out. Come on out. There you go. The twitch did it again. <laughs> I seem to have a shoal of smaller perch here at the moment. There you go, perfectly hooked, look. Absolutely perfectly hooked. There you go. Whoop. And the hooks come out. That's great. Perfect little fish. I'll repeat again, although these are only small fish, 
This method will get you a lot of big fish. Let's put that back. Yep. Here it is, look at this. Whoa, full of fight. Look at the spinner. He's going to do a jumpy in a minute. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. On this little rod, he's fighting fantastic. Fighting fantastic. There it is. Old Pika Ruby. Sure. I'm going to hand land that. Spinner's showing. You see the, the hooks on the mouth? If I actually landed that now with uh, a net, I'd get all sorts of catch stuff. So, what I'm going to do is let me show you how to unhook it. Up you go, like that. Forceps in. Let me just get it round like so. Look at that, perfect. Perfect. There you go. There you go. Look at that. I'll just put that in the keep net for a, a few minutes. Look at that. Perfect little pike. Again, you see the way I'm sort of hopping from swim to swim, fish to fish. And who said pike hurt you? Look at that. He don't bite you. Fabulous fish. That was the lure I caught it on. Really, I'd put it on to catch a perch. But it actually caught that small pike. It's a Voblex. Got a rubber head, and that spins round like so. They love it. Let's see if I can catch another one. That's another small pike. See, you fish for different things, you can't catch a pike, then all of a sudden, you're into a couple. Any small fish, but it doesn't matter. As I say, just opportunist fishing every time. There you go. Let's look this one again. There you go. Same spinner. Change the spinner and got two fish straight away. There you go. Slightly bigger. Look at that. Beautiful, huh? Well, here I am, back at the weir pool. Hopefully going to catch a bigger chub and a bigger barbel than last time. Well, that's the nice thing about this kind of fishing. You can just keep scooting around from one type of fishing to another. Although over the last couple of days we've only caught small fish, certainly the next fish could be a monster. It could be a six pound chub, it could be a 10 pound barbel, a three pound perch, whatever. But isn't that what fishing's all about? Wondering what that next fish is gonna be. I'll catch you next time round.